Hey, welcome back to The Health Bridge. Dr. Pedram Shojai here with my delightful guest co-host, Dr. Tammy Moralia. Hi. Hi, I'm so glad to be here. So we have a special uh, treat today. Um, and uh, this is a, this is an individual that everyone in the world has told me you need to meet. and Including me. Including you. And finally, we are here with Dr. Kellyanne Petrucci. Hi, welcome hey. to the show. I am so happy to be here and I'll tell you, I was telling, asking Dr. Tammy, I said, everyone's been telling me about this fine man, Pedram. And I even said, how many Pedrams are there? Could this be all the same Pedram? So it's a pleasure to meet you. And Tammy, you know I love you. Oh, I love you too. Love you. So um, you have uh, this awesome thing going on right now. I keep hearing about it. Everyone is on this subject. And you're a serious doctor talking about serious stuff. And you are all about bone broth. I, yeah. It has been for a long, long time, way before it became the thing. Yeah, and so it's been trending recently, but you've been talking about this for a while. So let's talk about bone broth and what it is and why the promise of bone broth is just so interesting um, on, on the medical side and what us as yeah. consumers, if you will, uh, would do with it. And, and how you use it for your weight loss. That's, yep. that's kind of like a superpower of yours. Yeah, it is, it is. So, you know, we talk a lot about in our business, we talk about the one thing. What is the one thing that makes the biggest difference in your life, your lifestyle, in your family, in your home, in your health? And for me, it boils down to bone broth. Out of everything that I've used in my clinic, so I've been in practice over 20 years. I've had multiple high volume practices. And in every single case, in the past nine years that I've used bone broth, I've seen absolute miraculous things happen. I've seen patients that had achy joints. How many times, Tammy, do we see patients that come in that have achy joints? How many times do we see patients come in with digestive disorders? How many times do we see patients come in with autoimmune problems? How many times do we see people come in with deep underlying fatigue that they don't even know what to do with anymore? How many times do we see patients come in with all the common underpinnings of every modern day disease, heart disease, diabetes, cancer, and even obesity? How many times do we see this? And what would you do if I told you that there's one product that I've used, a real food, nothing expensive, nothing gimmicky, and you know, another thing that has to be said, I didn't invent this. I rediscovered this. I rediscovered yeah. it, right? Because people used to know how to take care of themselves. And this was a weapon that's been used centuries ago. The hunter-gatherers use this. The hunter-gatherers use this. They yeah, use it to protect Italian. themselves. Yes, and his and so many cultures, did. many cultures have used this. Yep. So you know, this is nothing new. This is nothing trendy. But what I can tell you is, it works like wildfire when, when you apply it to the right food program, which is why my programs have worked. It's not just about the bone broth. The bone broth is the one that makes the biggest difference. But when you add the bone broth to the right eating plan, kapow, I call it my one-two punch. It works like nothing I've seen. So can we uh, peel back a little bit because, okay, I'm listening to this saying bone broth, what, what is that? So let's, let's go into yeah. like, what, are we boiling bones? Um, for yeah. someone who's never heard of this thing, what is bone broth and how do you even make it? And okay. it yep. only one kind of bone and different, you know, what is it? Here's how simple it is. Bone broth is basically boiled bones, simmered bones. What you do is you take either a stock pot or you take what I do, a slow quick cooker, and you really cut to the chase and you make it easy. You take whatever bones that you can get from your butcher, farmer's markets have them. A lot of times they have them in frozen cases and, and various grocery stores. It's not, they're not hard to get. And what you want to do is you want to get any bones that have marrow and cartilage in them. Shank is a really good one. Ribs, anything that's going to produce something that we love and it's called gelatin. And I'll get more into that in a moment, but you want that beautiful, lustrous gelatin in your diet. So all you do is you take these bones, you put them in the stock pot, or you put them in the crock pot, put water over the bones, and then you season them with whatever, whatever you'd like. 
salt, pepper, maybe, you know, or, uh, you can have garlic, you can have whatever it is. I like lemongrass. I love lemongrass. And all you do is you take lemongrass stalks, you smash them down a little bit to open up the casing that's around the lemongrass, you throw them in the pot, and you are done. You put the crock pot on or you simmer on, on the, on the, in the pot for either 12 to 18 hours. So chicken, fish, some of the lighter bones, they're about 12 hours. Beef bones, it's about 18 hours. Don't make it hard, it's not a big deal. If you only do 12, you do 18, somewhere in the middle, it's not gonna make any difference. But what you want to happen is pure magic. And that magic happens when all of the goodness from these bones seep out into that broth. All of the vitamins and all of the minerals and all of this collagen, and marrow which builds up, all of these wonderful things that you get, that's what you want. That's the magic. There's so much that happens with bone broth. And we talked earlier about joint pain, Dr. Tammy. We see this all the time in practice. Can I just say that there's chondroitin and glucosamine naturally found in these bones? And the studies behind this, look, I can't get up in front of people and talk about anything that I don't know is proven. I won't do it. I won't do it. Here's what I love. I had to do a segment for ABC National TV, and their medical staff is the toughest in the business they're known to be. And when I started really delving into the science behind this, not only, I didn't need the science, I really didn't in terms of clinical care, because what I saw worked was how it was working in my office, I knew there was something there. I just innately, I said, there is really something here. But when I did this segment and I started really deep diving into the research, it blew my mind. The research is totally solid behind this product, behind this food. And so what you do, take the pot, put the bones in, put water over it, you simmer it for hours, you get all this good stuff, makes your house smell wonderful, it warms you down to your toes, it brings all that nutrition into your body, and if you care, it helps you lose weight and look younger to boot. So it sounds like this is uh, obviously a phenomenal remedy for joint pain and, and, and all the things that you would want with glucosamine and, and, and kind of the chondroitins and, and the aches and pains in life. Uh, help me understand how this applies to weight loss. So I'm so excited that you asked me this because I love getting people healthy. That's what I do. And when you can have someone lose weight and look younger through getting healthy, that's really unbelievable. And that's why, because that's what it does. And there's two reasons why, Pedram, there's two reasons why this happens. Number one, University of Pennsylvania did a study. And this study was incredible because it showed by incorporating broths and soups into your daily diet, the average participant actually weighed 10 pounds less a year. And this was not soft science, this was a really well done study. So first, but the second reason is the real big bang moment. This is the, the thing that excites me the most. And that is when you use this bone broth, you solve the number one problem why people have weight loss or weight, a weight gain and they don't know why. Because a lot of people walk around aimless, and I'm looking at all of the programs, the weight loss, the Jenny Craig, all of these popular weight loss programs, and I look at their programs, and I look at their products, and I say, there is no way this is going to work long term. And I know why. And the reason why is because people are walking around with a sick gut. Yep. They're walking around with a sick gut. So what does bone broth do better than anything that I've seen? When you incorporate bone with this healthy diet, what happens is you heal the gut. Yeah, it's really and, interesting. You know, yeah, I so I don't know if you do this, Dr. Tammy. I don't know if you do this. You may not want to admit to it, but I'm gonna ask anyway. <clears throat> when you go to airports and when you go to functions, can you, do you not automatically, like the bionic woman, just start assessing people's health because you can't help it, it's what you do? Yeah. You can't help it. Okay, so, so we've done this for so long. You start looking at people and you think, oh gosh, I think maybe they have a thyroid problem. Huh, oh gosh, I think maybe that they, well, here's what you can really see on people's face and you can see it on their weight and where they deposit weight. You can see when they have a sick gut. And all of the collagen 
that is the cooked collagen. That's what gelatin is. Gelatin is cooked collagen. And this is the piece that's critical because this is like the glue that holds the body together. This is the glue that holds the body together. So think about if you get a sunburn and that sunburn, you know, you're, you're hurting. You put that aloe vera on your sunburn and it soothes and it comforts. The same thing with gelatin on your gut. So I would love if we could, I would love to take a, a little bit of time and just explain to everyone really what happens inside the gut and how it gets sick, if I can. And yeah. I, what I want everyone to think about is that if, if, if everyone just closes their eyes and they picture 25 feet, 25 feet of intestines are coiled up right here. They're coiled up. And within that 25 feet are literally trillions of cells. And here's probably the most remarkable thing that I'm going to say today. The most remarkable thing. I learned this in Switzerland. I did a lot of studies in Swiss medicine. And I remember the Swiss doctor jumping up and down in excitement to tell all of his students this. We are literally bags of bugs. We are bags of bugs. That's what we are. So here's the thing that's really cool. We actually have more bugs in us than we do cells. Think about that. Think about that. We have something inside of us called our microbiome. This is our body's ecosystem. And this has got to be right for you to be right. If you want to be healthy, if you want to lose weight, and you want to look younger, this microbiome, what I call, what the Swiss doctors would call your internal terrain, your fish tank, it's got to be right for you to be right. And why I love bone broth is because there ain't nothing that gets this system more right than bone broth. And that gelatin goes in there and it heals and it soothes and it takes your intestinal wall and it locks it like this. It locks it solid. Because what you don't want in those five feet, what you don't want are little tiny holes. You don't want little tiny holes that are created from these processed foods and these foods that are not, they're, they're inflammatory producing foods. This is what we don't want because that's pure trouble. That's when all the trouble, and it makes your system go what I call I tell patients, this is a technical term, it makes your body go wonky. And what you don't want is for your body to go wonky. So you have this bone broth, it's knitting the interdigitation of the gut lining is, you know, the fancy what I learned in medical school. Yeah. So then what, so that seems like it sets you up for a great weight loss program and you were talking about when you combine that with foods. So can you share with us some of the top fat burning foods that you yep. know about? So what I do, my patients, and so I teach doctors, I teach many doctors. I'm leaving this week actually for Seattle to teach a thousand doctors, a lot of protocols and principles. And so what I teach doctors is they don't want to take the time to teach their patients nutrition. And I'll tell you why, just from being in practice, because oftentimes it opens Pandora's box. It just is so time consuming because there's too much noise. There's too much to look at. There's too much to look. Look, it doesn't have to be hard. It really doesn't have to be hard. You cut to the chase. You eat the foods that turn you into a fat burning machine. You eat the foods that heal the gut and you eat those foods that stabilize your blood sugar. You're in, you're out, you're done because that's the three things that we need to accomplish. That's the three things. We need to heal the gut in the most powerful sense of the word. We need to make sure that we stabilize the blood sugar and by doing so, we become a natural fat burner. And third, we need to make sure it redu really reduce all that, that chronic inflammation because if you can picture chronic inflammation in the body, it's like a forest fire, like a wild fire that you can't put out and it all starts in the gut. So you have to think about it like that. How do, what do we want our foods to do? If you eat foods that accomplish those three things, you don't have to listen to all the noise. You don't have to get bogged down and you don't have to make it hard. So here's the first one. Now, a lot of times when things seem simple or they seem easy, we snub our nose to them. We think, well, this can't be it, really, really. It's not supposed to be hard. So the first one is just lean proteins, but here's the hitch. So we know you're thinking, oh, Dr. Kellyanne, protein. So tell me something I don't know. Here's what you need to know. 
protein with every meal. Eating protein with every meal makes a dynamic difference. And I have seen this tested out in so many different variations and in so many different ways. But building a plate with having protein with every meal does so much to heal the gut. We've got those CLAs, those conjugated linoleic acids that really make a big difference in reducing inflammation and in healing the gut. And that's why people ask me, do I really have to spend the money on pastured eggs? Do I really have to spend the money on grass-fed meats? Do I really have to do that? And here's my take on all that. So one of the pushbacks you get when you start talking about healthy eating is, you know, what about the cost? And what I say is, when you buy foods that have more nutrition or more nutrients in them, like say grass-fed that have more of the CLAs, the conjugated linoleic acids, you know, you're going to get better form of biotin, better form of choline, all of these things in pastured eggs. You do the best you can. That's great if you can do that because you're going to heal the gut in a, you know, faster. You may heal the gut faster. You may feel better faster. But you know what? Stressing out over the quality of the food you get releases stress hormones. And I don't care what anyone says. I don't care. I'm just, I'm, it's what I've seen in practice. It's what I've seen on my patients' faces. It's what I've seen in their life. If you are stressed out all of the time, it trumps what you're eating. It trumps what you're eating. You can't have these catecholamines, this cortisone, epinephrine. You can't have all this raging in your body all of the time because then what you eat doesn't matter. So what I say is you can't let your food stress you out. Yep. Then you're making, you know, you're putting your food in primary power. And it's not just food. It, food's a really important part of it. So you, you eat the quality of food, you know, in the best manner that you can. But having protein as one of your fat burning foods. I mean, and, and another thing about protein we have to keep in mind, it burns belly fat. And Dr. Tammy, belly fat's dangerous, right? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, We've known that for a long time. Yeah, and all the studies are coming out. And they're, so a study came out about 11 months ago that showed that belly fat in women also increases the incidences of breast cancer. So we know that it's, we know that there's trouble there. So we, we don't want to have belly fat. Protein does a beautiful job at diminishing belly fat, keeping your blood sugar in order, keeping inflammation down, and healing your gut, which is why I say protein, but here, listen to the end of the story, protein with every meal. So that would be the first of my fat burning and inflammation reducing foods. I got a I got a question, a couple questions yeah. there. What, one is, um, you know, in some of the functional medicine protocols, we look at having, say, uh, a gram of protein per kilogram of body weight. How much? Uh, a gram of protein per kilogram of body weight. Yes. So approximately, so if you're say 90 kilos, you need 90 grams of protein. So you just got to like watch that. How important is that number to you in your paradigm? It's important. It's important. Okay. Here's the thing, though. I, patients can't relate to a gram. They can't. It's very difficult for them. So yep. what I say, and so for me, it's somewhere between a half a gram and a gram. That's what I have found that has worked best with my patients, depending on things like, are they an athlete? You know, uh, are they pregnant? There's all kinds of stipulations to that. That's why saying flat out a gram, and that's a good guideline. It's a good basis, and I understand that. But when doctors go out and they try to communicate this message, patients cannot relate to it. So what I say is, if you're going to have three meals a day, Take the palm of your hand, yep. and about the palm of your hand is enough protein done. When you start talking about things like you and I, so scientists can sit around and talk about grams you know, all day. But for most people, they, don't, they can't eyeball that. So what I say right. when it comes to portion size, it's important because there's something called portion distortion. People have no idea how much they should or should not be eating. And so I say one of the first things that you need to learn to, be, to start a healthy lifestyle, learn how to build a plate. You can take this with you everywhere you go. It makes eating so stinking simple. So one of the things for protein is just the palm of your hand. That's it. Don't worry about the rest of it. Great, great. So uh, my second follow-up question to that is, we're talking about bone broth. Maybe you'll hit this in number two and three, but how much of this stuff every day? I mean, you sit, sit in there sipping on a thermos as you go throughout your day. Like, how do, you, how do you dose it? How do you keep it in your life? And how do you keep it kind of practically with you in this, uh, you know, in this busy life that we all live? Yes. Yeah, so as I, a mom, I want to know, can you make a schwack of it and <laughs> freeze it? <laughs> Great question, Dr. Tammy. Okay, so here's the thing. You can make a schwack of it. This is why I love Tammy. Because we come up with all these great words, schwack of it. Yes, exactly. So you can. 
you can make a you can make a ton of it and you can freeze it. You can freeze it for six months. You can keep it in your refrigerator for up to one week. Super simple. It's very cost effective to make yourself. I mean, these bones are cheap, like two dollars a pound. I mean, like it you can make a whole slew of it for nothing. There's also places online you can buy it. You can buy it from me at drkellyann.com. There's a lot of ways that you can get bone broth into your life. But so I did a podcast. Uh, a recent podcast with JJ Virgin this week. And so she said, you know, I carry things around so I can eat healthy all the time. And, you know, clearly from how she looks, it's worth it. And that's what people have to understand. Like, it's worth it to, to carry a thermos of bone broth around. It really is. So here's how you do it. There's something called an Instapot. You can buy these anywhere. Target has them. They're, they're all over the place. Buy them online. And they're little tiny kettles. And you plug them in and you can keep bone broth warm at your desk. You can also get a thermos, keep the bone broth warm in the thermos for long periods of time. I eat bone broth when I travel. So for me, I feel like as a role model, it's really important for me to walk the talk. So I need to feel energized. I need to look younger. I need to be slim and strong and all of these things. And so I know bone broth, again, it's that one thing. You have to pick that one thing that is the biggest needle mover in your life. And for me, it's that. So to me, it's worth it. So what I say to everyone is, what's it worth to you? What's it worth to you? Is it worth not having achy joints? Is it worth not feeling tired? Is it worth looking slimmer? Is it worth it looking younger? Is it worth it helping all these autoimmune diseases? Is it worth you know, combating all these, these modern day diseases that we have? To me, I say, hell yeah. And that's what you have to decide. So, but okay, so just, just to be clear on this, is this some sort of like GI IV where you're just kind of sipping throughout your day? Do you just have some in the morning? Is like, how, how do you phase it between is there your too other much? meals? Yeah. And it, you, so, so here's the answer behind that. There has been no studies on this yet to show is there a point of no return with bone broth. But I can tell you, I ran three studies in my practice over a 21 period uh, a time. I ran it in Hollywood. I ran it in New York City, and I ran it in Detroit. And we tested people out for 21 days, and they did a period of fasting. They did it with bone broth. They, did a, uh, they actually incorporated the bone broth into the healthy foods. We did all kind of testing, mixing, matching with calories, how many calories are in there, just out of curiosity. It's somewhere between 35 and 80, depending on where you go, where you get it, how much is there. So what I've found so far just through the testing that I've done in these three cities, is there is no overload. There is no overload. But here's what I don't think you should do. I don't think you should go on an extended period of time with just bone broth, because there are certain elements that's missing. Like, there's not really calcium in bone broth. You should know that. Calcium is important for every gate and channel we have in our body. The gates and the feedback systems in our body heavily rely on calcium. You do not get that from bone broth. So that's why I say you can have bone broth on its own. So you want to do a little fast with bone broth, you can do that. I would not recommend it over an extended period of time due to the fact that it does have some missing elements. Great. And so what are those other fat burning, you know, tips and so, tricks and foods that you were mentioning? I'd, I'd love to give you two more. So I say to patients and I tell doctors to ask their patients to do the same. So the first one we talked about is protein and really re-emphasizing the fact that protein with every meal is the game changer. The second thing is I love probiotic and prebiotic foods. Okay, so what do I mean by that? I'm talking about fermented foods and don't let this make you feel like eek and squeamish or like <laughs> <laughs> we, 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 just, okay. we just had a moment this morning at my breakfast table where I was trying to give her sauerkraut to put on her eggs and she looked like she looked at me like I'm crazy as my like my, my baby is sitting there slurping it up like literally Smeagol. like <laughs> sucking the sauerkraut strings into his mouth this less than two year old is smacking oh, his lips and oh but yeah I have, I have a 17 month old who just gobbles up sauerkraut oh, and Tammy who it. knows oh, who knows knows all the science is just like, oh my God, I'm trying, I'm trying. It's I keep trying, <laughs> I keep okay, trying. I me, me yeah. fermented foods and yoga, we just, I, I keep working on it. <laughs> okay, I'm, girlfriend, I'm with you on the yoga thing. We're type A, we're type A. Uh, so here's the thing, uh, I have an answer to that. 
Kefir I like, though. I was just going to say that. So here's what I'm a fan of. I am a fan of coconut kefir. Mm. I love coconut kefir. It tastes delicious. So when I tell people, okay, here's why I want you to have fermented foods. Here's why. Let's talk about the why first. The most powerful thing about our body, the most powerful thing, and why I fell in love with the human body and the science behind it is because we are constantly regenerating. We're regenerating. Do you realize that you can lose part of your liver and it can fix itself? Mm. I mean, our body is really powerful. And guess what? You can do that with your gut. And just so you know, red blood cells, they renew every month. Skin cells, about every two to 12 months. Bone cells, about every two to six years. Nerve cells, about every two to seven years. And your intestinal cells, get this, intestinal cells take about three weeks to regenerate. So what am I saying here? I am saying here, I don't care how schleppy somebody feels listening to this or watching this, I don't care. What I'm saying is there's massive hope and you can start right here, right now, today because all you have to do is feed your body with the right raw material. And so fermented foods, what they do is they provide powerful raw material to turn those cells over super healthy. And what happens in that 21 days? What happens? What happens in that 21 days is you are eating all of these, you're eating, so far we talked about the healthy proteins, we're gonna talk about the fermented foods. Those cells are turning over in the most powerful way. They're turning over and getting healthier, healthier and healthier. And guess what happens during that process? During that process, you're getting younger and younger and younger. Your skin's looking better. Your hair's looking better. You're getting slimmer. You're getting stronger. You're getting healthier. That's what happens. And fermented foods, this is what I call it. I call it the speed pass to that. I say, you want to speed pass to all that? I say, I said proteins once a day or proteins with every meal, proteins with every meal, fermented foods once a day. I have mine every morning with my breakfast. I get it done. I get it done. So, so let's talk Pedro. about <laughs> it. I'm telling you, it's piled it on his egg. <laughs> Man, it's, you know what? I, once you get out that door, you don't know what, what's coming at you. Well, so it's like you got to get it for breakfast, in my opinion, or else it's just so hard. And your control of what happens the rest of the day sometimes is out of our choice. Totally. So totally. I it's, love that idea of just, maybe I'll start with like three little slimy I, I think the coconut kefir might be your answer because no, that's have, We have kefir all the time, but I, I, you know what? I'm challenged. I want to like sauerkraut. All right. I just do. We're going oh, to line up shots. <laughs> Kellyanne, we're going to line up shots of sauerkraut <laughs> juice with Dr. Cammy here. We'll chill them. Okay. Freeze them. <laughs> I can swallow oh, it like a pill. Sauerkraut popsicles. Ooh. We can that make tiny little ones. I can swallow it like a pill. Oh, you guys are getting weird now. <laughs> <laughs> the sauerkraut popsicles. What was your third thing? What You got the, the protein, the fermented yep. foods. Yep. And what was yep. your third? So let, me, let me just say real quick, fermented foods, there, there's, there's uh, all kind of kimchi out there that's readily available. I just want people to know, I have, I love kimchi. It's spicy cabbage. That's an option. I want to let people know cabbage. Cabbage is an option uh, for people. There's fermented cabbage that's called kimchi. That's the kimchi. And then you've got things like the kefir we talked about. I like, there's water kefir and coconut kefir. I'm not a huge fan of dairy for some people. I think some people can have it, some people can't. So I love the coconut and the water kefir. And then there's also sauerkraut, if made in the right way. Sauerkraut's wonderful. And there's even fermented pickles. There's all kinds of ways that you can get this fermented food in your diet. Don't make it hard. Don't make it weird. Just keep it simple. And so that's what I wanted to say about that. And, and so the third, I will stop being Italian and I'll try to listen to my questions. <laughs> so the third, the third thing is healthy fats. So this, these, are the, these are the big movers, okay, the big movers. We talked about the bone broth being the one thing. We talked about the protein. We talked about the fermented food. The other thing is healthy fats. This is so important because these industrial seed oils that we're so used to, I mean, I can't tell you how many people ask me, what, uh, you know, canola oil isn't good? You know, sapphire, uh, safflower oil, corn oil, all of these oils, these vegetable oils, we'll just cut to the chase, the vegetable oils. Guess what? By the time you throw them in your cart, my guess is they're already rancid. And here is the glowing statement behind that. Rancid oils mean rancid body. 
period. We yeah. talked about inflammation. We talked about the forest fire. We talked about all of this. If you want that to happen, throw these oils in the cart because you're gonna live a pro-inflammatory lifestyle instead of an anti-inflammatory lifestyle. So the first thing, you gotta get these oils out of your body, out of your life. So all of them, so what do I suggest instead? Well, it depends if you're cooking with the oil or you're not cooking with the oil. So I love olive oil, I grew up on olive oil, it's sensational, but here's the thing about olive oil that a lot of people aren't aware of yet. It's really more of a drizzle oil because it has something called a low smoke point, which means that if you turn that stove up just a wee bit too high, that oil is beautiful and as magical as it is, it actually starts to become rancid. So we have to be careful. So I use olive oil as a drizzle oil, and I really love that. Another great oil, another great drizzle oil, actually that people don't, aren't aware of and they don't use a whole lot is avocado oil. Avocado oil is really creamy and rich. And the best thing about, I love avocado oil, you can use it on your skin. Hmm. You can pat this on your skin, and it's the only oil out there that's actually been proven to naturally rebuild the collagen in your skin. So this is really a wonderful second take on avocado, which I really love. So those are kind of my drizzle oils. I also like macadamia nut oil. It's a little pricey. It's a little pricey. It's more of a treat to have this, but it's creamy and buttery, and wow, it's delicious. So those are kind of, they're, they're my drizzle oils. And so the, my cooking oil, my staple cooking oil is and always has been for, gosh, 15 years is coconut oil. Don't be afraid of coconut oil. We know a lot of those studies that said that this stuff, they blow your heart up. We know now. And the studies are showing more and more and more. And I read these studies all of the time. In the best journals, they show us that really it's coming down to inflammation, creating a lot of this heart disease. And it's not these oils. These oils that are filled with things like these lauric acids and all of these beautiful constituents in these oils, like, like coconut oil, that really keep you so healthy. What they do is they create a really healthy cell membrane. And that's really like literally the casing around the cell that helps your cells bounce. You want your cells flowing like a river and not clumpy. So let me say that again. You want your cells flowing like a river and not clumpy like a swamp. Okay, that's important. And so in order for that to happen, your cell, mel your cell membranes have to be really healthy. And what I love about coconut oil is that it delivers that. And here's the best part. If you're cooking with coconut oil, you can turn that heat up you can't, you can't, it, 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 the, the smoke point is so high that you would take a forest fire to, to, you know, make this oil rancid. So you can just go to town, you can cook and not be stressed out about it. And another good oil that you can cook with and that you can use, actually, it's butter from grass-fed cows. Mm -hmm. So the reason why, and so I say, they say, can, uh, butter, I can have butter on your diet. Yes, you can, but there's a couple of times, only a couple, where I say, okay, I'm going to put my foot down on quality. I have to put my foot down on the quality. Things like luncheon meats, things like bacon and pork products, I say, if you can't buy the best, you need to walk. You need to walk away, and you need to find another source because really it's not going to make you healthier because it's going to create inf inflammation. It's the same thing with butter. You can have butter. Butter is a yes if you buy butter from grass-fed cows. Why? The reason why is because it's loaded with CLAs, the conjugated linoleic acids that help reduce inflammation. Again, they help your cell walls. They do a lot of beautiful things, and they burn belly and it burns belly fat. Love it. Love, Love it. it. So, I know you have a new book coming out. Um, when's it coming out, and what's it called? Well, Pedram, Tammy, now that you asked, I am proud to present my next baby. It's called Dr. Kellyanne's Bone Broth Diet. And I know some of you are just can't see it, but it's a new book. It's coming out from Rodell Publishing. Again, Dr. Kellyanne's Bone Broth Bar Diet. And just to give you a little backstory, so I've been with Wiley Publishing on six books. And many of them were bestsellers. Living Paleo, I wrote for Wiley Publishing. It was one of the best-selling for dummy books of all time. I've written a lot of books that I've, I've loved. But I have to tell you, this book that's coming out, on December 8th, Dr. Kellyanne's Bone Broth Diet is the pinnacle of everything that I've done. I, I want people to know what I know. I really do. What I've seen from this program, this bone broth diet, which is all my healthy foods combined with bone broth, it real, like I said, it's the one-two punch. That with your healthy lifestyle, it, it, it's, it's the triple threat. 
you're going to get it all. You're going to get it all from this. I'm, I go through, there's tons of recipes in there and there's tips, tricks, traps, all of it. <laughs> so I really hope everyone enjoys it because it's, it's the most meaningful work that I've done so far. You know, I love it because you're still in practice and yes. you're a mom. And yes. so you're a working mom that sees patients. So you're in touch with the challenges of of everyday people and then you experience them. So I love that your book is steeped with, you know, research and evidence-based ideas, but it's doable. Mm -hmm. It's Still really, really practical. Thank so you. So we're talking about uh, taking the bone broth, but then obviously having the protein every single meal, uh, every time you eat to have protein, to have the microbiome adjusted with the fermented foods once a day, uh, and then specifically having just the, the good fats and making sure you don't take the bad fats. And uh, I know there's a lot of talk out there about like, oh, you could eat bacon now, but not all bacon is created equal. So if it's not a clean animal, you're in big trouble. And so I love that you uh, kind of uh, drove that home. Uh, Kellyanne, where can people find you? I think that this is just, uh, I think it's really refreshing to be talking about bone broth and, and doing it in a way where you're, you're science-based and, and kind of where you come from, I think is uh, some, some place I really appreciate. Uh, and so I think Tammy and I both have been geeking out about this and we're, we're excited to have had you on. How can people find you? Oh, thank you very much. It's been an honor, but it's drkellyann.com. And uh, so again, drkellyann, K-E-L-L-Y-A-N-N.com. There's no E at the end of my name. Stop doing that, everyone. <laughs> it's drkellyann.com. And so I was just voted as one of uh, the top 100 nutrition blogs on, on the website, uh, on the web. Uh, and it's because I give a lot of good content. So I'm a natural writer. Writing is, I, I write for the Huffington Post. I write for Mind Body Green. I've done articles for Wall Street Journal, a lot of other places. Uh, writing is what I love to do. And you'll find that I give really current science-based good information website uh, that people love. Uh, I have a, a vivacious uh, social media following because I give great tips and great messaging, you know, inspiration. And so people ask me all the time, like, what are you really about? And if they were to ask me and I, I had to answer that in one word, I'd say I'm about inspiration. My job is to inspire, inspire you because I know that however you're feeling today, I don't care how anyone's feeling today, I know where they can be. And it's the six inches between your ears and it's right information, and that's what I want to deliver. Love that. When is the book coming out again? December 8th, Dr. Kellyanne's Bone Broth Diet. Wonderful, wonderful. Uh, I want to thank you for being here, and uh, Dr. Tammy for being yes. my beautiful uh, guest hostess <laughs> today. Fun. This has been a lot of fun, great and uh, good luck with everything. I want to see you back. Uh, this is just great. It's great work, and thanks for doing what you do. Thank you, and Dr. Tammy, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Dr. Tammy, by the way, is uh, she's my go-to doc there is she's outstanding there's no one like her she stands alone so thank you and pedram it was a pleasure thank you so much thank yep. you thank you